everyone. Today I'm going to do a video, probably be a little bit longer than some of the ones that you're used to, uh, but we're going to cover a lot of different ways to create texture in your artwork and show you some different techniques um, that'll sure to give your watercolors a nice pick-me-up. So as you can see, I just wet my surface here. And the first one that we're going to do is kind of work on clouds. We're going to try to touch on a few of the common things that people try to paint in their everyday work. And um, and look at some some better some more interesting ways that we that we can kind of create those things. So like I said, I uh, I've secured my surface here. I've painted it um, with some water just to kind of get it wet. And we're gonna put some um, just touch some blue to the surface here. And you can see I'm just kind of barely touching the surface, and it's gonna give you that natural like cloud appearance by letting the water do the work there. So when you're happy with it, you can just kind of leave it. Um, you can put it in as, you know, as many white spots as you'd like, um, or as few as you'd like. Uh, so that's just one way to kind of create some clouds. And the next one that I'm going to show you, uh, again, I'm gonna wet, kind of wet the surface here. I'm gonna grab my, my bigger brush and, and just get this surface ready for us. Anytime I tend to work like wet into wet and really want that natural feel, I'll really uh, make sure that that's good and wet first. Uh, so then, um, like I said, I'm gonna we're gonna sh I show you a different way to create some clouds, and that is with the lifting method. So I'm gonna prepare some paint over here, and I'm gonna kind of get this nice uh, smoky violet color to almost look like it's a you know a bit of a dreary day. Um, and and uh, it's the way you would see when it's really cloudy and just kind of um, fill in my surface. I'm not, you know, I, I'm not leaving the white spots that maybe I would have left over here. I just really wanna kind of get the color in that I like. Um, maybe, maybe a little darker, maybe we'll go a little, a little darker. It's a, kind of like a, we said, a dreary day. And while that surface is kind of is wet, um, we're going to go in and lift out some clouds. By doing that, I'm going to use a paper towel. I'm just going to kind of, you know, squish it up here. And I'm just going to go down and press into my paper where I want that cloud to be. So as you can see, I press and lift it up. I'm going to maybe put another one here in the, in the corner. Um, and again, you can, you know, you can make them as little. It's just a little bit more of a controlled way. You can make as many. Um, or as few as you want to, but it, um, it gives you a little bit more control over where you want the clouds to be, whereas the other one, we kind of, the water did the work for us. Um, so the next method to create texture that I want to show you is uh, with um, spatter painting. Uh, before we can do the spatter, uh, we're going to just need to uh, get the surface ready and let that dry. So I'm just going to put in a, um, um, a lighter color here, and I've do have a bit of a dry brush. I can lift that out of there real quick. Um, so I'm gonna, it's not not too wet, um, but I'm just gonna give this a nice light um, kind of undertone to it and then we'll go in, like I said, when this starts to dry and I'll show you how to do that spatter method. Um, so the next one is uh, that I wanted to show you is done with masking fluid. It's also, um, it, like I said, it's a way, kind of like the lifting where you want to put the white there. This, um, with the masking fluid, you, you put your white down ahead of time. So uh, masking fluid is, kind of works a little bit like a glue or a rubber cement. And it um, comes in this, you know, little container. And you paint it on. So I'm going to put some of this on my brush. Um, maybe I want to kind of create, like, um, some waves looking or some, you know, some white caps. I can, you know, really put in some some spray you can you can really control it too I mean you could you can do some writing with it if you wanted to um, sometimes when people want to leave certain areas um, you know white while they're painting so that you can feel free to kind of go in and um, and give that a nice wash meanwhile you're still able to kind of get some nice um, some nice lines in there so we're gonna again let that dry and we'll come back to that one as well. And that's called the masking fluid. The next one that I wanted to show you is a different way to mask, different way to keep your area white um, while you're painting. So you can um, use a, like a, a tape, like a painter's tape, 
or um, or contact paper. And so here I'm just gonna, um, I do have a little bit of um, tape. We're gonna use for right now that same tape that we, painter's tape that we've been using. Um, and we're just gonna put this in here, maybe make like a couple, couple of little birch trees as the, what, what they'll end up being. So we're gonna, again, we're gonna paint over that surface. Um, you know, maybe we'll, you know, try to get that nice and nice and dark. And, um, and we're just gonna paint over this whole surface. We're not even gonna worry about, um, worry about the tape being there because in the end, it will come off quite nicely for us. And so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna darken that up a little bit so we can sh show you exactly kind of how nice that looks. Maybe make it a little more, um, a little more blue. Uh, so uh, again, um, we're gonna just give that a couple minutes to dry also. And then I'm gonna show you how to, um, like I said, how to go in and, and, um, and leave your spots white and do a little bit more lifting. The next one I wanted to um, talk to you about is um, the dry brush that you kind of picked up um, last week um, or the week before maybe. And you learned um, how to kind of, how you can get a lot of detail and control um, using the dry brush method. So here I just wanted to show you a nice way using the dry brush to do bark. Again, we're looking at some of the kind of the common things that people um, tend to paint in their, in their pictures. So. With the, sticking with this idea of trees over here that we have going, I'm gonna, um, you know, maybe lay in like a nicer um, brown tree uh, trunk here, you know, so that we can really look at how to create that bark. I, I might um, put in even some smaller little pieces coming off to the off to the side here. Um, you know, just try to make it look a little natural. You can see again that my brush isn't too, too wet here. It's pretty dry so that I can get some thin lines. Um, but the good part about that is, is that I can go in now with an, with another flat brush. Um, that And I have here, I have my brushes kind of wet, um, but just a little bit. And so I'm really going to work on that drag that we kind of um, talked about before is how if I touch my brush to the surface, you can see that it kind of skips over a lot of the paper there. Um, so it just puts in like a little bit of color. Um, and, and so we're going to kind of um, stick with that same method there where we just look at keeping our, our brush. You can see it's starting to really um, do that, that nice drag where it gets in, in there, but it skips. Um, so we're going to look at adding now a little bit, how do we add some other, a couple other colors, sticking with that, you know, the dry brush feel so that we get, really get some good um, white, a little bit of white spots in there, but we're also getting, you know, some of the, that nice, that nice black. So I'm going to, um, you know, some of the nice color. So now that that's in there, you know, we can uh, just lightly go in with other colors, uh, maybe, uh, you know, like we said, maybe a li some little darker spots make it look a little more natural. And I'm keeping, as you can see, I'm moving pretty quickly, almost like I'm sketching. And that's going to kind of keep that um, that same feel that we were looking for and darken it up around the edges here where where one branch kind of touches the next and make it, again, make it just look a little bit more on the, you know, give it more of a natural feel. We'll darken up one side to make sure that we're kind of showing like that, that, light source and again that's kind of you know how you want to work that work that dry brush feel also with um with that in mind here too um we can go in you know you could keep that dry brush going to you know kind of add some grass in here uh, or you know whatever you want to make it to make it look natural but again you want to kind of keep that that drag that we've talked about um you can go over the top of it if you wanted to um, but the way that if you don't use too much, too much water, you can really see the naturalness of, of the white showing through. So, um, we're going to, you know, kind of go back over here now and take our tape up so I can show you that, that, uh, nice clean area that we were able to reveal there. Um, with that clean area, as I talked about earlier, when we did this section, um, that's called masking. I'm masking that area. So I've used tape to do that. Um, but again, there's other things you could you could use as well. So uh, we're gonna just grab 
some paint and we're gonna make these look like birch trees here using the same dry brush method that we used over here. And they're just kind of common ways that uh, people would that people would paint. Um, sometimes you might see, you know, again, uh, maybe some little knots. You wanna try to make it look as natural as possible. So I'm kind of following like that, that feel that um, kind of that natural direction of, you know, of the roundness that the tree would go. Um, and you can maybe, you know, maybe darken up some areas. Um, and, and again, if I'm just kind of, I'm, if you can see, I'm kind of, um, curving my brush just a little bit with my, with my strokes here. Um, so that I get that, the same feel that I would get if it was looking at a birch tree naturally and it kind of is going to give that illusion of it being more um, three three dimensional in nature so don't be afraid to really get some you know some darker spots in there um, not too much because again black can be can be tricky um, but enough just to um, to make this look a little uh, realistic in nature so when, um, along with the masking, like I talked about another way is the lifting, like we lifted the clouds up here. We're going to go in and we're going to um, lift a spot over here. Um, maybe we might, you know, you might choose, oh, I'd like to have like a bit of like a moon showing down. So I've just got some clean water on my brush. And with that clean water, I can go back in and kind of just lift this, lift this area. So similar to the paper towels, but I'm controlling it more with my brush. And each time I'm going to trying to go in and clean up what's there. I've put a little bit of clean water on my brush and I just go in and clean it up. So that's another way to do some lifting. It kind of gives a soft effect. I mean, you can do any kind of shape you want to. Or on the same note, if you were to make a mistake somewhere and, you know, and, and drop some paint that you didn't want there, you can you can uh, go in and, and try to lift it. Um, the next one that I wanted to show you is my personal favorite, and that is the salt technique. And everybody really seems to love this one, so it's a great way to add texture. So I'm just going to kind of go in and paint this surface here, nice uh, blues and greens, kind of my favorite color scheme here. And I'm going to paint this whole, that whole surface. I'm just going to use some common table salt and sprinkle it into... And a little bit into my wet, it has to be really wet, my wet painting there. You can see that the chemicals in the salt is starting to react with the, the water that we have down there and it gives a really interesting texture. Um, the next 